Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Muscle Maven Radio. I'm your host, Ashley, the Muscle Maven Van Houten. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're all doing well. Today's episode, we're going to talk about aging. So something that we all, if we're lucky, get to deal with (laughs) at some point or another. And to any young people listening, you know, we're all going to get there. So this is useful for people of all ages. There's no too young or too old to learn about healthy aging. Um, This is for men and for women. Uh, And I think one of the things I wanted to focus on with this topic is Well, twofold. One is how you can thrive and exceed expectations and really crush it versus, okay, I got to get old. How can I like minimize my suffering? Basically, we always want to look at this in the most positive light and what is really possible instead of just kind of doing the bare minimum. Um, So that's sort of one aspect of this conversation. And the other aspect is understanding the difference between what is really, quote unquote, natural aging and what is inevitable and what is going to happen versus things that our culture believes is inevitable about aging, but actually isn't. So this goes more to like lifestyle factors and again, culture where we think, okay, we hit this age, this is what we're going to feel like. We hit this age, this is what we're going to look like. It's just, it is what it is. What are you going to do, right? And, you know, being in my mid thirties, I hear, a lot of people my age, some a little younger, some a little older, talking about this is the way it is now. You know, I'm in my 30s. I'm going to have some aches and pains. Things are different now. And I know that there are some some things that change as we go into every succeeding decade, you know, and like most people are not going to be performing or looking exactly the same at 60 as they were at 20 or 30. But I think that a lot of what we consider these sort of aches and pains and giving up things we love or or changing things doesn't necessarily have to look the way we think it does. Um, and I think that we can, with some momentum and some mindfulness and some uh, paying attention to things before they become a crisis, we can really avoid a lot of the negative aspects that we associate with aging. So my guest today, I was super, super excited um, to get a chance to have her on. She is a big deal. Uh, And so her taking some time to hang out with me was awesome. Uh, Her name is Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci. You probably already know her name. She is a New York Times bestselling author. She's a weight loss and natural anti-aging expert, which I love. She is a uh, board certified naturopathic physician, a certified nutrition consultant. She works with a lot of celebrities, so I kind of ask her a little bit about that too, um, what it's like being a doctor to the stars, kind of crazy. Um, but she she works on helping people thrive and feel good and look good as we age. And she's a big proponent of healthy animal products as well as plant products, of course. A big bone broth fan. So I am on board with that big time. Um, And so we talk about things like simple things like foods that uh, are anti-aging, as in they are anti-inflammatory and they support our body's processes that keep our skin looking good and things like that. We talk about gut health. Um, we talk about how really aging well does not happen by accident. You just like health these days, health does not happen by accident. You have to be purposeful and mindful, um, but it can also be an incredibly enjoyable and rewarding process. Um, and kind of just switching our attitude towards, well, we're never going to be like we were when we were 25 a lot of us can be better and feel better and look better. And we have the benefit of wisdom. And uh, I think that that's a positive way to to look forward to each passing day, because if we're lucky enough to keep getting older, um, we should look at it that way. We should be positive about it. So I'm really excited to share this one with you. I hope that it's beneficial for you. Um, And without further ado, here's my chat with the amazing Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci. All right, Dr. Kellyanne, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Oh, the pleasure is all mine, pretty lady. You know, you have a great message and I love 
to support people who are great messengers. Thank you so much. And listen, we've been talking for like two minutes off the call and you've already given me some really valuable, helpful information. So I appreciate That's what you. That's what we try to do. Yes. That's what yeah. we try to do. We all try to lift each other and support each other the best we can. Well, I love it. And this bodes well for, for I think, how helpful you're going to be to our listeners um, today. So I'm going to dive right into it because I've already done an intro. Everyone knows who you are anyway. Um, you and I obviously see very much eye to eye on nutrient density, bone broth, all of these good things. I kind of wanted to dive into, because you do talk um, about foods for fixing maybe specific challenges that people are, are experiencing rather than maybe just, I just want to improve my health, which is such a vague concept anyway. Um, and a couple of these topics I haven't really covered too much on the podcast. And so I'd love to start with the first one, um, food for anti-aging. Can we talk about this? And like, what does that mean even to you? Yep. So food for anti-aging, great question. And here's what it means to me. It means that there are certain foods that are going to move you towards an inflammatory life. They just are, they're going to move you towards that. And there's, there's other foods that will do the exact opposite. So you have to think about food and nutrition, kind of dial into it in that way. I had a friend, and it was so funny, um, who didn't really pay particular close attention to his diet, never heavy, but he didn't have that luster and demeanor that follows through the type of foods that will keep you more youthful. And he had to have a surgery. And because of the surgery, he had to cut way back on a lot of different kinds of foods uh, because he couldn't process fats in the same way and he couldn't process foods in the same way. It was an intestinal thing. When I saw him, I kid you not, he went from looking 60 to about 25. That's what foods can do for you. So we always have to remember foundation, foundational, foundational. No matter what you layer on top of your plans, programs, protocols, diet, there's always this basic foundation. So anti-aging foods are the foods that we hear about so often, but we can't make them just a passing thought. We have to start thinking about these foods as this is my foundational foods. And then I can have other foods. I can train my body because we'll talk a little bit about that. You can train your body to burn the way you want it to burn, which is the beauty of what we can do. But there are the same type of foods that we talk about oftentimes when we're talking about health per se that are beauty foods. I'll give you a great example. Blueberries are one of the most beautiful health foods for beauty. Why? Because they protect the skin against damage from the sun. Okay. That, that's a fact. That is a fact. And that's a double blind placebo study. This is a journaled, uh, a journaled fact that blueberries have the type of antioxidants in them that will protect your skin from any kind of damage from the sun. So thereby giving you less wrinkles. Mm-hmm. So if you say had a shake every day, if shakes were your thing, or you had some salmon once in a while and always coupled your salmon. Oh, I'm having salmon. I always put blueberries with salmon. You still have to start making it like a habit, start making it habitual, make it a a routine. Think of some of these foods. And I know that you're going to love this food is avocado. You can pair avocado with just about anything, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, And avocado is such a beautiful way to add beauty into your life. Mm-hmm. It makes your skin and the elastin in your skin very different. And again, it comes down to foundational beauty, luster and demeanor and things like blueberries, things like avocados, things like we know about leafy greens. We know that. Okay. But a couple of leafy greens and 10 exit with things like a really good oil. There's anti-inflammatory herbs. We call them aromatics. They bring a whole different flavor. And by the way, if you want to eat healthy and you're thinking, how the heck am I going to eat healthy all the time? It drives me crazy. How you can differentiate food and make them really tasty is by using these aromatics, finding spices and things that you really love and use them in your food and you can change the taste and yet still keep it healthy and exciting. Yeah. And I, I, I like, obviously that you used a lot of examples of delicious foods, because what I try to do is get people to eat nutrient dense organ meats, which is a much harder sell than blueberries and avocado, but But boy, does it work. It works. But but, I mean, anyone, but anyone can look at you and say, I want what she has. Okay. Anyone can look at you and say, wow, she's got beautiful skin. She's got bright, clear eyes. This is not happenstance guys. This happens 
when you know what to do, particularly after you get to a certain age. I can tell you that from my end of it. When you get to a certain age, you have to know some things. You've got to know some things. And then you become a timeless beauty. I don't know about you, but I'm planning on being a timeless beauty. That is my plan. That is my strategy. And it's not that hard. That's the thing. I'm, I'm on that bandwagon too, for sure. And I appreciate a couple things about this conversation. One being that you can and should be looking at nutrition in this holistic, but also targeted way before you need it. Um, you know, if you want to eat for beauty, you don't have to wait till some arbitrary age where you think it starts to really matter. You should be doing this all of the time and proactively approaching your health th- that way, you know? Um, and I also and you know what's funny about that. I have to just say something because you had me thinking it's so much marketing. So much of everything is marketing. Like you think about dentists, dentists had it right. Dentists talked about, they talked about this preventative side. And they made everyone really understand that with tooth care and gum care, there's this whole preventative thing that you have to do. You've got to floss, you've got to brush, you've got to see the dentist this many times a year. And most people oblige and they do that. And that's part of how we've been conditioned. Mm -hmm. And the Botox people, they they were brilliant in their marketing because they have actually convinced 22 year olds that that's when you need to start using Botox to prevent the wrinkles, to prevent it. So a lot of, you know, when we think about beauty and we think about, you know, looks and, you know, the outwardly appearance, a lot of it is how we've been marketed to. And we try to match that marketing. And so, you know, that's another thing that you have to think of. It has to be, you know, what you find beauty. And I love, you know, that really like that Hepburn, real classic beauty, like really growing into your beauty, growing into your grace Mm -hmm. by, you know, really what's inside what's inside and then doing the best you can, doing the best you can with the frame that you've been given. And you can do that through eating the right foods most of the time. So you don't, it doesn't have to be no, 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 no. And this punishment, sometimes it's no right now. Sometimes it's like, it's not now. It doesn't have to be never. You can still have fairy dust in your diet. There's things that you still can eat, but you have to have a routine. You have to have that everyday beat is what's so important. Everyday beat, everyday beat, then you can change it up. You can change it up and have some of those foods that perhaps you're craving. Yeah. And I also believe in this, I mean, I think it sounds cliche, but it's also true that beauty, like health is beauty because a lot of us think different things, blonde, brunette, tall, short, whatever is going to be the most appealing. But if you are healthy, like you said, if you're vital, if you have healthy skin and you have energy and you're happy because you're healthy and your digestion is good, that is what makes people beautiful. We can all look different, but we're going to be beautiful in that way. Um, but I health is a new luxury. Health yeah. is a new luxury. We're finding that out that health is a luxury. And by the way, when you lose your health, you find out real quick how that effervescent, how that really comes from so many things that, you know, giving our body the right raw material. So when those cells turn over, they turn over in a way that works for you. You want your cells, your cells are begging to regenerate. They're begging to turn over. You have, if you give your cells the right raw material within the lifespan of those cells, let me give you an example. Again, your intestinal cells, they turn over about every 21 days. That's why the bone broth diet was a 21 day bone broth diet. There was a reason for that. That was methodical. So for 21 days, if you give your body the right raw material, some pretty incredible things can happen. You start to turn over and basically develop, you know, a a beautiful skin, eyes, framework. And and it's a wonderful thing when you see other people transform, but that's all part of the transformation process. Mm -hmm. You mentioned this individual who, you know, by all accounts, generally seemed pretty healthy, like wasn't overweight, but kind of didn't have that sort of like just vital, robust, healthy look. And I think that it's important to have this conversation right now, especially in the midst of what's going on in the greater world where so many people are trying to just like survive, not thrive, not look their best, not feel their best, just kind of like get through it, Um, which of course we want to fight back against because I think no matter what your circumstances are, we want to be doing better than the bare minimum, right? Like you want to try. And I think think that's our role. I think that for your role, my role, you know, that is part of our role and uh, certainly part of our passion and our mission. And, you know, we are mission-based, you and I, and um, the people in our, in our inner orbit. And let me just pose something for you. Part of the reason why people feel that way is because they're not excited inside 
because a lot of people feel kind of, for lack of better words, blah, right? They don't feel that, they don't feel that uh, joy, that joy has kind of dissipated over time because we go through these periods of burnout, life burnout by going from thing to thing to thing. You become very robotic in your life and what you do. But let me say this. I talk a lot about gut health, the importance of gut health. A lot of the products that I, that I you know, stand behind and a lot of the programs that I stand behind are very interconnected to this whole idea of gut health. And one of the reasons why is because understand that things like serotonin are man, manufactured in the gut. Yep. And this is what charges that feel good. It's the feel good hormone, right? You want, there's a, there's a gut brain access, a access where you want everything that you're feeling to be as pleasant as possible. And you really can make a difference with food. And of course, a lot of it's mindset. We know that it's mindset, but you have to meet people where they are. And sometimes they're like, I don't care about that mindset stuff. They're not there yet. They're just not. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is do everything you can, no matter where you are right now in life or no matter how you're feeling, you can start addressing the gut because when you start addressing the gut, your immune system starts sparking back into action and the serotonin starts being manufactured. And then that gut brain axis, it starts communicating in a different way. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, you start feeling better. You start sleeping better. You're know, keeping hydration in mind. Make sure your body's hydrated. You know, hydration, sleep understanding gut health. These are all principles of good health that will really start changing your mind, your yeah. brain, yeah. brain. Health. Yeah. And you know, it's the brain and then the second brain in the gut. That's where it all starts. Right. So, and, and yeah, understand that your brain, just like, you know, we pay attention to the outward signs of aging. That's what we see, but there's a whole thing going on inside yeah. and your brain can also age. Your yeah. brain starts aging. So that's another thing that we have to be cognizant, uh, cognizant of and for start protecting our brain. Right. So tell me some things that, you know, we all know that we are different when we're 15 to 35 to 55 to 75. But I think there are some things that a lot of us consider inevitable about aging, which is like some of the things you mentioned, sort of general, just malaise and dullness that we consider inevitable that are not really necessarily. So can you talk a little bit about some of the things that are, are happening as we age and how we can minimize them or decrease the damage? And then some things that like aren't even really necessary part of aging at all. We just kind of think they are. Yeah. So there's things that go on our, there's things that are going on in our body. Our body's like an orchestra. One thing works with the other thing. And, you know, hormones are all interchanging and interacting, but some of the things that we see as we age and some of the things that you can control, uh, for example, there's something called ages, advanced glycation end products. And this becomes more of a problem as we age, because with age, digestion starts slowing down because the enzymes in your body start slowing down. And we did this uh, really kind of fun study uh, on Dr. Uh, I was on the Dr. Oz show talking about this, about how some people, when they eat a cracker and why the whole principle, uh, the whole premise was how some people really carbs just crush them and other people, it doesn't affect as much. And the reason why is a lot of times your digestion mm -hmm. and this whole ability of amylase to be able to digest foods and understand that your enzymes start slowing down as we get older yep. and thereby metabolism starts changing as we get older, as our, our whole mechanism between switching from, from, from sugar to ketones and understanding this balance, but we want to have this metabolic flexibility that you can bounce back between the two very efficiently. And as we get older, this metabolic flexibility, that too changes. So all of these things in so much of how we age and how we see ourselves in the end uh, of this whole aging process, oh my gosh, I see that my skin's lost its luster. I see some wrinkles are starting to form. I see my hair starting to thin. I see I'm starting to get this, this pouch, this, this, you know, this belly. Uh, my skin is very, is very different. My skin, it feels very different. All these things. And many women have come to me and they say, I don't feel like myself anymore. So much of this can be addressed by understanding how to properly hydrate the body. And it 
again, feel that gut, which is why I have been such a big proponent of bone broth. Why I have been such a big proponent of things like collagen, because, you know, I'm in, I, I, I believe that protein is very important, particularly for women. You know, you, it's so, you don't want to go through that sarcopenia because there's nothing that ages you more than not having that muscle. That's why we have to make it so, it's, you know, such a, a core piece of, of our mindset when it comes to looking young. Mm-hmm. And so again, making sure so, you know, some really good anti-aging hacks are drink lemon water. That would be a great anti-aging hack because it's got a lot of things in there, hydrates you, and you've got a lot of vitamin C actually, more than you realize in that lemon, that's a precursor for collagen. We need that to uptake collagen in our body. That's really terrific. Understanding that these, the, these healthy fats, I mean, healthy fats are really, a really important thing to consider. Uh, alcohol, you have to watch alcohol because it does age us. And even though, you know, I have most of my adult life, I have enjoyed alcohol, but I'm, I'm cautious about it. I, I don't, I actually think about it because I know it's part of an aging, it's part of the aging paradigm. It just is. Mm-hmm. So just understand that it maybe it's not so awesome for us to just keep your mind on that. And again, sleep is really important. Make sure you keep the room at about 67, 65, 67 uh, degrees. Make sure that you start watching all that blue light that's emitting from all over us about two hours beforehand. Blue blocker glasses are really helpful. And again, I'm going to go back to it. I love broths because here's the biggest thing for aging. If you can intermittent fast comfortably, if you can make sure you're getting that protein, you're cutting down sugar with those advanced glycation end products, which really aid you in a, in a big way. And you can get that collagen and that, and that gelatin to heal and seal that gut where all that good stuff is manufactured and really work on your, your metabolism, work on your blood sugar. Because at the end of the day, the three things that are going to keep us the youngest, and I will say this, this is like the big aha of everything I'm going to say, you must, must, must reduce that overall inflammation, that head to toe inflammation. You must, must, must work on healing your gut because life is hard on the gut. It just is. And thirdly, you want to become a natural fat burner, meaning you want your blood sugar to be healthy. You want a good blood sugar. You want to know that my hemoglobin A1C is where it should be because then you know your body is running really efficient and youthful bodies are efficient bodies. And those three buckets are what I look at when I'm evaluating any diet plan, when I'm evaluating products, when I'm evaluating anything, I know that I would not put my Dr. Kellyanne stamp on anything that did not provide those three buckets because I know at the end of the day, the only way to make lasting change or lasting transformation is if those three buckets are involved. Okay. This is so beneficial. I'm so grateful. There are people like the Gabrielle Lyons and, you know, Dr. Lyon and Dr. Kellyanne's of the world who are influential, who can speak to this, because I do think it's, it's not, it's kind of ironic to me that the the people who tend to be mostly concerned with anti-aging, at least from an aesthetic perspective, do stereotypically tend to be women. Um, We are also the ones who tend to have the hardest time with uh, like, you know, getting enough protein, getting enough dietary protein, and oftentimes managing the stress-related inflammation um, because we've been so programmed and the healthy fat side of it, because we've been so programmed to eat low fat, that protein is heavy and bad for us, that these little hundred calorie carb snack packs are what's going to get us through the day. And don't lift weights because you'll get too big. Don't do that. We're all going to be bulky tomorrow. (laughs) That's the whole story. We all know it. But do you find that like bone broth, for example, is a good like gateway for women maybe who might be a little intimidated by the like upping the protein, animal protein side of things? It's a little easier for them to get their head around that. Do you find that or? I love that you said this because it really is a good starter kit. Yeah. So for people who are saying, you know, I want those three buckets that you just talked about, you know, where do I start? I would say start by adding bone broth into your life. Yeah. Because once you start it, you'll get into it. That's why, you know, I first brought uh, bone broth to the market. I didn't create bone broth, but I did revolutionize bone broth. I created a food category. When I first started talking about bone broth, there was not a single 
single person selling bone broth or talking about it or anything. And that cat, that category is still going strong. And the reason why is because it works. That is the only reason why it's still going on. It still has teeth and, and actually it's still growing. Yep. So bone broth is a good gateway for two reasons. Number one, it heals the gut. And number two, for those interested in fasting, it says, I keep trying fasting and I, keep, I bonk or I can't do it. It's a great way to add comfortable fasting. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you can do for anyone, they, they say, I want to start doing bone broth. What do I do? I always recommend first that you start with chicken because it's more familiar to people. It's just a more familiar flavor. And by the way, understand that bone broth is not like a can of soup that you get. They're entirely different, different uh, the pure antithesis of one another. You know, bone broth is simmered over a very long period of time, releasing all this good stuff that we've been talking about. So you can either start by adding two cups a day, just start to say, I'm going to add two cups a day when I normally slump, or I want to put it in my gut, my gut the first thing in the morning. Start there. And if it's something that you think that you want to make part of your life, then I would suggest two non-consecutive days if you're trying to cut down on weight or you've got health issues that you want to start working on resolving, two non-consecutive days a week, sip on bone broth, have a light meal at night with a protein, with a carbohydrate and a healthy fat. And the kind of carbohydrates you should have are fibrous greens. Yep. Do that two non-consecutive days a week and you'll start noticing that stored fat what do I mean by stored fat? It's the stuff under here. It's the stuff on your arm, all that stuff that the belly fat, that stuff that's really stubborn, that starts dissipating because you're starting to do that metabolic switch. You're starting to burn fat in a different way. And that's why I love intermittent fasting. And what we found in studying three different cities with quite a lot of people was that you still get the same results with the white knuckling fasting where you have nothing that when you sip on bone broth. So it's been really advantageous for a lot of people. Um, we're coming up close to the end here, but a couple more quick questions um, because I want to get as much as I can out of you um, yeah. while you're here. Um, how, how do you, what, how do you reconcile, because it does seem like one, another kind of overarching nutrition challenge with women, again, stereotypically, but it, it pans out that this, this is something that happens, is women either tend to undereat or at least they undereat nutritionally. So maybe they're snacking all day, but they're not really getting like the nutrition that they need. Another way that bone broth can help out. But how do we, if we're working with women or we're consulting or coaching women and we're at once trying to heal the gut and get them fat burning by incorporating some fasting, but also encouraging them to eat enough. How do we do that? <laughs> Big question. Well, well, yeah. And, and we've been in this culture of punishment. Yeah. So most women are punishing themselves into losing weight, working out hours and hours and eating less and less. And if you understand the real metrics behind this, and this is what I would encourage anyone who's working with these women, this is really about, again, I have three health prongs, but the three mental prongs, or you really have to know yourself, you have to love yourself and you have to be yourself. Those are the three other prongs. So we've got, we've got on one side, we've got, you've got to, you know, heal your gut. You've got to reduce overall inflammation. You've got to become that natural fat burner. On the other side, take time to know who you are. Take the time out to learn you. We study so many different things, but start learning you. And then the more you learn about yourself, find those extraordinary things about yourself that only you carry. You are your own DNA. Love yourself. And then once you get there, be yourself. And so a lot of this punishment that we do by saying, I, it's the only way, it's the only way I get results. It's the only way to, to get results. I promise you, I've been doing this over two decades. There are other ways besides starving yourself. In fact, starving yourself is right up there with artificial sweeteners. It's such false advertising. It's such false advertising because it's not how our physiology and our DNA works. It's not genetically how it works. So really understanding that, you know, maybe for you, you have to do some macro tracking for a while. Maybe for you, you've got to add in some intermittent fasting. Maybe for you, you have to start looking at your, the type of workout. I know a woman who is now down uh, 23 pounds. She's try, been trying to lose weight. She's 
51. She's 51, been trying to lose weight. And she kept working out like her husband. Her husband's a CrossFitter and he had a certain way that he worked out. And for, I'm talking for years, for 12 years, this woman got up and did, you know, 530 every morning, got to the gym, tried to lose weight, you know, did everything. It wasn't until she got to this point where I said, you know what, do you think you're in crazy bill here? Do you think you need to just take the time to sit down and know you, learn you, learn you a little bit? She did take that time. She learned a lot about herself. And part of that is she started learning about what she needs to do to lose weight. And so I talk about this a lot with exercise. It, you have to do what you love and understand out there, folks, there are many, many ways to get results. There are many ways to get results in fitness. I'm, take it from someone who's been sitting down next to women for two decades. There are many ways to get results. You do not have to suffer. Do what you love. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, listen, we, that's the best place to end it because that's, that's all I need people to hear. <laughs> I've been trying to tell people, I'm glad there are people like you out there who are doing the work. I appreciate you so much, Dr. Kellyanne. Um, so valuable, so much information in such a short period of time. Where can folks go to learn more about the offerings that you have and bone broth and all of the good stuff that you talk about all the time? Sure. Check me out on Instagram at Dr. Kelly Ann, and you're going to be stuck with my last name on this, Dr. Kelly Ann Petrucci. Check me out on Instagram, and I just started TikTok. I'd love it if you check me out on TikTok. Can I get on TikTok? Listen, I'm trying to learn this thing. You're allowed on there, but no laughing. Okay. Okay. It's <laughs> a deal. Kelly, if, you, if you figure it out, you teach me, okay? It's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> We're all trying to figure out this whole thing together. So that's true. That's true. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Kellyanne. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. All right. That's that. Thank you again to Dr. Kellyanne for taking the time to chat with me. I just, I gotta say again, from a selfish perspective, I just love it when really smart, successful doctors agree with me on things, you know, like just eat good food and like, love yourself and have a good time. I know it's easier said than done, but it's also kind of simple uh, when you think about it. So, um, and similar to this, I actually do want to do, this leads into the show sponsor, Primally Pure. Um, they're amazing. They're my favorite skincare company ever. If you use the code MUSCLEMAVEN at primallypure.com, you'll get a discount on anything you buy. They have like I said, natural skincare products. So natural deodorant that I swear to you actually works. It's like a miracle. Um, Tallow-based skincare that is just rich and amazing and nourishing. I have not tried a product of theirs that I didn't like. I love it so much. I like praise it from the rooftops. I've been doing it for years um, because it just works. The ingredients are good. Um, what you put in your body matters and what you put on your body matters. The stuff is absorbing into your skin. And I want um, things like beef tallow and shea butter to <laughs> absorb into my skin rather than paraben, phthalate, synthetic chemicals that we have no idea what they are. I mean, it just, it's common sense, but their products are just luxurious and beautiful and amazing. So thank you to Primally Pure. But similar to that, I plan on doing a quick brief solo episode talking about skincare. And it won't be just an advertisement for the companies that I love. I promise you, I will probably talk about the companies that I love, but it's going to be more talking about like my routine, my skincare routine, the things that I do from a skincare perspective, but also from a lifestyle perspective to take care of my skin health. Um, because maybe I'm more interested in this than you. And you guys can tell me, like reach out on Instagram or whatever, if you're like, that's, I don't care. I want to hear about something else. But for men and for women, I just think that it's this really accessible way to take care of yourself that can feel really good, um, that can feel kind of like, again, sort of just a little moment of like luxurious self-care in a busy day. You're doing something good for yourself. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive. It doesn't have to be crazy time consuming. And it is just another one of those little things that adds up over time. You know, it's not a big deal to use some good moisturizer, but when you do that over <laughs> decades, it's going to pay off for you. Like it's, 
you know, health and vitality is just a bunch of little things you do consistently. And I just love skincare. Like I nerd out. I think it's fun. Um, It makes me feel good. And again, as we kind of get older, I feel like we care a little bit more about these things. They start to make more of a difference. And I found myself caring like less about makeup and more about just like what my skin looks like, because I don't want to cover things up. I don't want to hide things. I just want to feel good in my skin. And I think most people are probably like that. So stay tuned for a solo episode. Unless you guys tell me you don't want it, I'm going to do it. Uh, All about healthy, natural skincare practices. I hope you join me for it. I hope the dudes listening stick around too, because it's important for you guys as well. Um, We all want to look good, feel good, and have healthy skin. So that's that. Thank you so much for listening. Please, please, please share this with someone who could benefit. Please leave me a rating and review so that I can keep doing this job that I love so much. Um, your feedback is so important and so crucial and spreading the love and the knowledge is literally the only way this thing can grow. So thank you for being a part of it and uh, I'll see you next week.